This week's homework is going to be to record your first scratch vocal. So this can be the beginning of a serious song. If you already have a song written that you've been wanting to record, you can start experimenting with that. Or um, what uh, we like to call in songwriting is a work tape is basically like a scratch version of the song, a rough version of the song that's just to get the idea out. If you haven't written a song yet, I have a cool resource I want to share. Um, you might have heard me talk about BeatStars.com. BeatStars actually has a lot of free beats. Uh, obviously, maybe you want to support these producers and actually buy a license to their track. But uh, for me, I'm probably just going to use the track for inspiration and then make my own track or license it as an acapella. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do a search for uh, Brazilian bass style music. I'm really into that right now. <laughs> Slap house. And then over here, uh, filters... I'm just going to say show me only free beats <laughs> and do a little uh do a little listen down. Oops. this one a lot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and download that one. So doing this gives them my email address, basically it gives this artist um, the right to market to me. So that's why we're doing it for free. Um, so I can get on this guy's email list, but happy to do so. So go ahead and send me my free download. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a little something to this and show you uh, a quick scratch recording of it so that uh, I could show you some basic editing. But first of all, when we get into the recording part, uh, remember to arm your track that you want to be recording to. So I'm going to arm the record button here. And again, just as a review, that is that is saying that when we do hit record, we're going to record to this track. If I just hit play, it's not going to be recording. It'll only be recording when you see the red populating here. Uh, so I want to make sure that I hit this button so I'm actually recording. And you can see that I am now recording. So I downloaded that beat from my email and I'm just going to go ahead and drag it right in to Pro Tools. And when you do that and drag it into this dark space, uh, again, it just creates a track automatically. Um, so it's just loading there. So um, now I'm gonna write to this. I'm gonna lay it down a uh, scratch and we'll get into that. Okay, I wrote this really cute little one-liner, um, and then I realized I want this to be a lower key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the section and go to my audio suite just to audition this part of the song in a, in a different key. So in audio suite, you probably have a plugin called Pitch Shift or Pitch, just Pitch probably or Pitch 2. Um, I think that comes with Pro Tools. To easily change the key, uh, look for something that says coarse with semitones. Uh, fine is sense. Uh, that's going to be just like a little, f you know, flattening or sharpening of the notes. But coarse will actually drop it by actual half steps. Pressing play, this is what it sounds like in its regular key. <laughs> But I am going to try it down, um, like two semitones down, and yeah, that feels better for me. So I've decided that that is the key I want to shift it to, so then I'm going to select the entire track and render it. So the 
first thing you want to do after you do your first take is check that your gain levels are okay. Um, mine are just coming a little bit out of the dark green into the light green, but not quite hitting the yellow. I might even be able to go a little bit higher on my gain. Also, I turned down my fader on my record channel so that I don't hear my voice through my headphones as much, but I'm going to have to turn that back up. Uh, if I want to hear the playback. So that's another reason why I do my recording on a different record channel. Boys don't seem to cry, so why should I? Whoa. Boys don't seem to cry, so why should I? Whoa. First things first, I'm going to decide which take I like better, uh, how I would do that with playlists is uh, whichever playlist you're in, if you hit solo, um, it's only going to solo this one within that playlist. If you have uh, other audio on other tracks, you will still hear that, um, such as the instrumental, because this solo isn't the same as this solo. This is just out of these two because I'm in a playlist, out of these two, uh, I just want to hear this one and not this one. So solo buttons within the playlists only uh, affect the track that you're actually working on. So which one do we like better? Boys don't seem to cry, so why should I? I'm gonna unselect that, so now it's a default listening to the top one. Boys don't seem to cry, so why should I? That one's a little pitchy. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. Um, you're welcome to pop it up like that. Uh, I'm going to Command-Z that. Uh, but I want you to start using these arrow tools as well. See how this one's grayed out. Uh, this one is usable because I have something selected. If I don't have it selected, it's not available. So I'm going to just select it. And this arrow, clicking that, will pop it up to my, which is, this would be called the comp track. And these would be the playlists or the takes. So pop that up there. Um, I now don't need my playlist anymore. I'm just going to go into waveform. Let's make this bigger. Again, we have our trim tool when we're out to the side. I'm just going to trim this in. I call this cleaning my room. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. I like to make sure that uh, we don't have a lot of empty space and um, that it's very important to do fade-ins and fade-outs at the beginning and end of every audio wave or crossfade if two tracks are connecting. So uh, I, did, I used my trim tool just there. It's just kind of anywhere on the mid-ish area of the end of a wave. Uh, you can see uh, it shows up there as well. Um, and then I'm going to go to the top of my wave and it creates a fade in or fade out. Um, because I'm in grid mode again, I'm going to make sure I'm holding the command button and then click and drag a fade in. Oh, too much. <laughs> I'm going to Apple Z that um, command and then pop it there. So that looks good to me. And I'm going to do the same to the other end. I'm going to see, I'm not pressing the command button, so it just snapped to the grid, right? It'll just snap to the grid. But if I hold command, I can uh, bring it in a little more neater and then do the last fade over here. So I'm going to zoom in on this area. And this is a great place to put a fade because uh, there's no audio. Um, it's definitely harder to do like in between words. You know, you might try there, right? Try there. You got to use your ears and it might um, start to get a little uh, weird sounding if you fade in the middle of a word or words that are really r mumbled together like how I speak. <laughs> so, uh, so if you did it like this, that would be fading just the one uh, audio wave itself. But I'm going to Apple Z, Apple Z. If I do the fade on the bottom, it makes a crossfade like that. Again, make sure you might want to be holding command to be in slippy mode. You'll just get used to doing it that way as opposed to having to change to a different uh, grid mode. And just a reminder as well, uh, 
holding down, hovering over like the bottom half of a wave will give you the hand tool, which is our grabber. Uh, so we can grab and move things. Uh, notice uh, this was crossfaded, and since I moved it to another track, it just kind of remade the fade for me as a uh, fade in and a fade out. Uh, that's just something Pro Tools will do for you. And then if you are hovering over the top of the waveform, that's going to be your selector tool. Again, grid mode, it's just going to pop over and just select the whole um, amount of the grid I have programmed. If it were quarter notes, I would be able to do smaller regions. Okay, and then one other fun thing to be aware of. <laughs> it's not that fun. It's just kind of basic. Sorry. Everything's fun to me. If you select um, the fade itself, uh, you can uh, either you can move it around um, by clicking and dragging, or you can also delete it uh, by hitting delete. Uh, it just deletes the fade. Yeah, I could delete this one too. I want it back though. So I'm just going to uh, command Z those. One thing I want to show you too, uh, the trim tool, uh, whichever the way the bracket is like open towards and facing, that's what you're going to be moving. So um, I'm facing the main audio. So I'm actually just moving, I'm trimming the audio waveform, the main waveform. Uh, if I hover, if I hover over here, uh, see how the bracket shifted to the other direction. That means I'm facing the fade. So now I'm actually going to be trimming the fade itself. Um, so that's really it for the smart tool. Stay tuned for the walkthrough of the quick commands. But uh, your homework this week is going to be to record your first scratch vocal. I am going to take this week to go and finish writing that song. I literally just wrote it, uh, and wrote that one line, and I love it. So I'm going to continue writing that. And next week, we will go in the booth, and you will watch me record. And hopefully seeing it all in action will answer a lot of questions for you.